when we go places, people usually like the friars. And then the Sisters of Life show up, and nobody cares about us anymore. <laughs> so please don't kick me off the channel and replace me with Sister Onions Day. It's not gonna it, it could happen. I am Father Mark Mary. I am Sister Onions Day. I am a Franciscan friar of the Renewal. And I am a Sister of Life. And this is Sense Presents. So what you kind of plugged it. You have a podcast, Sisters of Life have a podcast called Let Love. Yep. Let Love Podcast with the Sisters of Life. That's it. First of all, it's a genius title because you can let love show you who you are. You can let love win the victory. You can let love find you. You can let love tell you who you are. You can let love win your battles. You can let love do just about anything. You can let love deal with your stuff. You can we'll talk let about love. that next week. Amen. The title didn't come from nowhere, but it's an expression of something deeply held by your own heart and those of the sisters in your community. Yeah, why let love, right? Well, I think uh, it's, it's the reality that that's what every human heart needs. This is the cry, the ache of every human heart is for love. Uh, and the reality is, is you don't have to walk far in the day, you don't have to go far in life before you're aching for it, right? And actually, if you're aching for love, you've got a healthy heart because this is the way that God has made us. And this is what God has made us for. Um, God is love and we've been made in the image and likeness of God. Uh, therefore of love. So we're made for this incredible, deep, outrageous, awesome communion. And yet, how do we get love into our lives? How do we get that out there living inside right here? So how do we do it? How do we get the big love out there in here? Check it out. Okay. I'm in. I'm down. No, no. All right. It. Let's sell it. This is a story that's de near and dear to the life of our community. So Colonel O'Connor, Colonel Archbishop of New York City, and uh, when he was ordained a bishop, uh, by St. John Paul II, so right, these big Polish hands uh, laying on our founder's head and being anointed with a grace to be a good and holy bishop. And as he's walking back from his seat, um, he notices a figure pressed against the wall. And he knows right there who this person is, it's Mother Teresa. And they had been friends throughout their life. So he went over there and he took her by the hand and this woman, this holy woman, just looked him right in the eye and she said, give God permission, give God permission. And our founder took this and like lived by it. And, and it changed his life. And as he encouraged us as sisters to live this way, it has changed our life and it's allowed our community and our charism to flourish, um, to give God permission, to live like Our Lady, to live the gospel of the Annunciation. This reality that like, God um, is after you. Um, God can't wait to invite you into this outrageous adventure of love, this epic of communion. Um, and for us, the response we need to give is our yes. And this is why I give God permission, let love. Basically what we're giving permission to is the Holy Spirit to break into our lives and bring us into that communion that we've been made for and designed for. And I love that you, how you frame it with, through the Annunciation, right? Yes. So, so Our Lady's fiat is letting yes. love, right? Yes. And, and letting love take her on this new adventure mm -hmm. and, this, and, and writing this new love story that she never expected. And um, mm -hmm. so now, like, what, what does, how can we have our little moment like that? Where, what does this look like? What did it look like? Amen. Maybe I can invite you into um, a story that I was blessed to bear witness to um, in walking with a, a young woman who came to us looking for support and resources when she was faced with an unexpected pregnancy. A little similar to Our Lady, um, but I think her story has something for all of us. And so basically the story goes like this. I'm a young sister uh, hanging out at our visitation convent and in New York City, doorbell rings. I open the door and here's this young woman standing there and she says to me, um, hi. Um, I'm just coming from the abortion clinic and I want to know more about your program. And I was kind of like, you know, this is not our standard fare. Uh, we don't usually get referrals necessarily from the abortion clinics. I was like, come right in, like, let's get some coffee. We had some cookies and I was like, just tell me your story. And she basically shared, yeah, um, she's three months pregnant. Father, the baby kind of walked away from the situation. Her family said, you know, um, it's up to you. But she knew it was going to stretch him um, if she said yes to this pregnancy. And so basically she felt she had no choice, scheduled the appointment, 
But on her way down to the abortion clinic, she said, God, if you don't want this to happen, you've got to do something. Um, so she looked up, she looked up, um, invited him in just a little bit, gave him a crack. And um, sure enough, she went down to the clinic. She was waiting in the waiting room for the procedure. And she felt drawn to go to the brochure rack and pulled out this one brochure. And somehow it was one of our brochures um, that we have this privilege to walk with thousands of women each year who are facing unexpected pregnancies and trying to, f to find their way in that situation. And our brochure was there, which no small miracle, kind of crazy. And uh, she read the brochure. She started to cry because she knew this was God's answer to her. Showed up at our door. And even with that, it's like, you know, she had to empty the bucket. There was pressures, there was fears. You know, this was a big, uh, this is a big decision that was confronting her life. Um, and yet, um, at a certain point, after listening, pressures, fears, her hopes, her dreams, um, and her just saying, you know, I just want to be true. I just want to be true uh, to my heart, to my life, to this, this love that I know I'm called to. And there was a moment where there was just like, there was a great quiet after like sharing, sharing her heart. And literally like, I, I think it hearkened to the Annunciation. Like there was this explosion of grace, like her whole countenance changed. And she just looked at me and she said, sister, I just got to let go and let God. Um, he's got me. He's going to back me up. I'm having this baby. And like, seriously, she rocked it. She rocked it. Um, she graduated from high school with honors. Uh, she went to college. Uh, she gave birth to the most beautiful little girl that like lights up the room uh, when she walks in. She is so amazing. Um, she found an amazing man when she went to college and she got married and now has a beautiful family. And this is how we let love right um and this is how we let love we give god permission um and when we do um we know we have a god of love who's going to back us up who's going to carry us through who's going to win the victory and who's going to bring even greater life um, greater beauty out of even the most difficult circumstances so this is like on the big scheme of life but you can live it anytime, anywhere, and basically love's there for you to back yeah. you up. And so for those who are, who are wrestling with whatever, whatever they're wrestling with, and they want to give God permission, mm -hmm. and they want to let love, like what does, what's a real practical way to like give God that little crack? What can that look like? You know, I like to call them miracle minutes. I, mean, I don't know if you're familiar, Father, but... Uh, did you make that up? I, I kind of did. All right. Life can get crazy, and uh, we can be, be going so fast that we actually don't see the possibilities right in front of us. And so... A miracle minute is like step back, uh, be, be still, um, and let yourself be available to this God of love who is like crazy about you. He's the hound of heaven. He's a self-bestowing God. Like it's never a question if he's loving you, it's how. And miracle minutes can kind of like allow this overshadowing, this great breaking in of the love that we need, of the grace that we need. And that will lead us to the wholeness, to the peace, to the life that we're made for, right? Like happiness is anchored in love, capital L. And Miracle Minutes can help us stay anchored. Amen. Maybe you could take a Miracle Minute right after watching this video. Amen. Right? Why put it off? Let's do it now. Why put it off? Thank you, sister. Beautiful. Thanks for if having you, us, If Father. you want to learn more about letting love, you can check out the Sisters of Life podcast, Let Love Podcast. Thanks for watching. Remember, we are pilgrims on the third. So most peregrinos, poco a poco. You know what poco a poco means? Little by little. Little by little. Vamos a guy. We're going to make it. All about it. Take care. Do Sisters of Life fist pound? Oh, yeah. Nice job. <laughs>